Welcome to Swangen. I'm your host, Janine Blake. First, we here at the Inuvialt Communication Society would like to congratulate APTN on their successful launch Wednesday, September 1st. We all enjoyed the show and we look forward to working with you on future programming. On our show, Swangen, we'll bring you the recent happenings in the Beaufort Delta. Some of the regular updates that we will have this year will be segments on the Inuvialt Regional Corporation and its subsidiaries, updates on the community corporations, and information on the Beaufort Delta self-government negotiations. We will begin this show with an interview with the Chair and Chief Executive Officer of the Inuvialt Regional Corporation, Nellie Cornwayer, who joins us in studio. How has IRC evolved over the past 15 years? I think like any other corporate group, uh, it's had its ups and downs, uh, but it's survived. It's healthy. It's a healthy corporation. Um, but uh, at the same time, we we're continue to try to stabilize it. We continue to try to put policies and procedures so the beneficiaries know, you know, how we have to act. So if we don't act according to the policies and procedures that the board of directors of IRC approve, then there's something to measure our um, performance against. You know, I think that uh, in setting up the um, or implementing the final agreement has been a very difficult task because uh, we were the first and um, we've had a lot of difficulties in getting government to recognize that the claim needs ongoing implementation. Uh, given that we didn't have an implementation plan as stated, but took it for granted that a uh, signed document between the federal government and uh, territorial government ourselves would normally be uh, responded to on a continuous basis so that it does work. But uh, we are now dealing with the government on an implementation plan so that we have a time frame to deal with the outstanding issues. So uh, we're not where we should be. Uh, I would say we're maybe about seven, eight years uh, beyond implementation when we should have done certain things and but we're not uh, we are a healthy organization but there are a lot of things that could be better what does the organizational structure look like in the final agreement uh, in its makeup has the in regional corporation which is basically the political arm and and the overall corporate uh, responsible uh, partner and um, there's a game council, which is a bit of a parallel organization, which handles wildlife issues, environmental issues, and the, uh, also um, uh, puts people from the game council, represented from the communities, somewhat like the Inuvialt Regional Corporation. And uh, they uh, are party to a lot of the, um, the uh, co-management boards that are set up uh, that you know, go beyond uh, the land uh, or that we own and the uh, and uh, the other areas so it's it's a broad has a broader mandate for environmental and wildlife issues uh, the de uh, development corporation uh, also has its own board and uh, they have uh, a responsibility for economic development mm -hmm. and uh, and just basically making money and the Inuvial Petroleum Corporation also uh, is a separate uh, entity, but reports to IRC directly. What kind of involvement do the beneficiaries have in the claim? We have to make sure that the final agreement does work for the Inuvial. So an, a, a beneficiary uh, at a community level generally deals uh, with their community corporation, but oftentimes because they're not resourced uh, uh, you know, as well as they could be, a lot of the concerns come directly to the regional corporation. We have a section in the IRC 
which we say the Community Development uh, Committee, which handles the social issues. And um, I guess as long as we're uh, uh, committed to you know, seeing that the final agreement is effective, we have to keep tracking what's going on in the community and be supportive to individuals, whether it's through the community corporation or directly, or um, if you don't belong to a community corporation living outside, the individual uh, beneficiaries generally make contact directly to the, the regional corporation office. What does the future look like for the Inuvi Alouette Regional Corporation? Well, it depends on how hard we work, <laughs> as every beneficiary wants us to uh, uh, all, a, a lot of times be all, everything to everyone. And it's difficult to say, not to say no or that it's someone else's responsibilities. We try not to do that. But uh, we find that the um, Inuit-specific, Inuvialuit-specific programs and services are becoming more and more important to Inuvialuit because of the general cutbacks in government. Um, I, I believe that we have to be more focused in what we do, and of course, uh, we're looked to in this region to provide opportunities through projects and uh, projects that we support and, and uh, pro which provides opportunities for employment, for business opportunities, uh, and just basically people want to work. And, and I think that it's going to be a challenge for us. Up to this time, we have uh, two more cleanup sites, um, Shingle Point and Clinton Point, which we have to work very hard to get the contract. But that provides a lot of employment uh, for people. Um, the um, Inuvik uh, gas, Ikil, uh, gas project has given a lot of benefits for, for business and, and uh, employment opportunities, but that will be finished soon. So we're going to have to work very hard to try to get more opportunities in this region because it's, it's uh, what individuals really want to see. They want to be able to to say, well, I want to go to work and I want to be able to support my family. So there's a lot of pressure. So we have to respond to that pressure. Once again, that was Nellie Cornoyer, Chair and Chief Executive Officer of the Inuvi Alouette Regional Corporation. The Inuvi Alouette Settlement Region is comprised of six communities. They are Holman, Saks Harbor, Polituck, Tuktoyaktuk, Inuvik and Aklavik. Each of the communities has a community corporation and we will be bringing you bi-weekly updates from their corporate managers. Canada's Western Arctic. Ours is a land filled with lakes, rivers, mountains, and tundra. This is the traditional home to the cultures of the Gwich'in and Inuvialuit. We are also a multicultural region. Our people live in towns and hamlets such as Inuvik the administrative center for the government and land claims organizations. Approximately 10,000 people make up our population in this vast region. Our existence has always been with the land. We teach our children traditional knowledge that has been passed on from our ancestors. Although our ways of living have changed, we still try to educate our children with cultural values.
More than ever, our younger generation is growing up with the modern lifestyles of today while still keeping in touch with their culture. The Inuvialuit Communication Society first began producing television programs in 1985. From our main office located in Inuvik, we produce two half-hour programs. The Mapta, meaning all of us, is cultural and linguistic in scope. Through documentary format, we show the Inuvialuit lifestyles in the communities, in their modern surroundings, and bring you on the land to our traditional hunting grounds. Swangan, meaning to give support, is our current affairs program, bringing you the issues that concern the Inuvialuit of the Beaufort Delta. To learn more about the people and the culture of Canada's Western Arctic, watch Damapta and Swangan on the Aboriginal People's Television Network. In the studio with us, we have the Honorable Floyd Rowland, Deputy Premier of the Government of the Northwest Territories. He's also the Minister responsible for seniors. Welcome to the studio, Floyd. Can you tell us how the GNWT is recognizing the International Year of the Older Person? Well, we've, we've been quite busy uh, within uh, the government and, and joining the uh, Canada Coordinating Committee on the Year of Older Persons. And uh, we've uh, along with Nunavut uh, formed a joint committee and uh, the uh, Bishop Sperry is uh, our representative that uh, sits on the Canadian committee. Uh, we've been doing a number of things that uh, are bringing focus and, and trying to highlight some of the contributions that those elders have made to our society. I know that here in Inuvik local residents have formed an international year of the older person committee and they've been busy hosting events for the elders can you tell us a little bit about the rest of the territories and what other communities are doing to celebrate 1999? Yes, there's a, there's a number of activities going on. And uh, for example, in Yellowknife, the Yellowknife Senior Society is doing a book to uh, mark out the history of Yellowknife and, and do that uh, activity. Uh, throughout Canada and the rest of the Northwest Territories, there's also an oral history project that's being done where in communities, uh, community members and students are going into uh, seniors and elders' homes and, and interviewing them and getting stories from them to uh, record some of the history that has uh, brought us to where we are today. Are there any upcoming celebrations that you know of for the International Year of the Older Person? Well, I know locally there's, uh, there's been some ongoing work here. Uh, we've uh, um, done some some work in the community. I know there's been some very dedicated volunteers to help the elders committees here establish themselves and take part in this this year. And I'm aware that there's a picnic being held at uh, Caribou Creek. Uh, I believe it's the 24th of August. So uh, there's some activities going on there. Some berry picking. Uh, they'll be eating some of the traditional foods such as muktuk as well. Is there any message that you'd like to send to the elders in the Delta? Well, I, I personally I'd like to send, yes, a message to, to all the elders here because I believe their contribution to our society here has been very important. I know myself, I rely a lot on what I've learned through the, through the years from uh, my folks and other elders that we used to always travel with. And I, I would wish that they would continue to voice their concerns and opinions to us. Uh, as the younger generation goes forward. We, we need to know more of our own culture and history because I believe that helps us to be the people we are today. Thank you for joining us, Floyd. Once again, that was the Honorable Floyd Rowland, MLA for Anuvik, Deputy Premier of the Government of the Northwest Territories. Inuvialuit drum dancers have been singing and dancing for countless generations. The songs and dances are as old as our people, kept alive by our elders and shared in public gatherings. Through their drum dancing, 
Our people celebrate Inubialuit life, remember the people and events of the past, and offer hope for the future. The drums may fall silent. The dancers may soon put away their dance clothes for the last time. Only a few of our people continue to drum dance. In the old days, the Inuvialuit loved to dance when they gathered together in large groups. Billy Day of Inuvik remembers those times. Long ago, the people used to gather at Kitagazawit. The big bay at Kitagazawit used to be filled with houses. When the people got together, they'd play games and drum dance. They did not know about Christmas and New Year's long ago, but they would get together on the darkest days of the year. They would challenge each other and play games. The people that had been out on the land would make songs. When they had finished making a house, they would pick the person with the best songs and the best drummer. That one would lead all the people in a drum dance. He would dance his song right out the door. When they were finished, the people would go back to their camps. Before they went, they would make plans to get together again. The dances were very popular with people of all ages. Long ago, almost all the people joined in when there was a drum dance. Not like today. Almost all the people knew the songs. That's why they would all go down to the floor to drum dance. The elders taught their children how to dance. This made sure that the skills of the drummers and singers would survive for future generations. I learned to dance from my old father and my old mother. I liked their enthusiasm when they were dancing. I'm still drum dancing and I really like it. The dancers need properly made drums. Norman Felix of Taktuyaktak explains how the people of the region make their drums. Now we're all, I'm not going to talk. 
This is oak. It is straight like this because I put it in hot water and steamed it. While I steamed it, I bent it. This is the fiberglass. It is easy to work with, so I used it to put the bone on. This is caribou horn. This is where you tie the skin to the groove. I put the wood ends together and put it in a little clasp. I use the aluminum nails because they won't rust. I put the nails on first, and when it is ready, I put the skin on. This is the groove where I tie down the skin. I tighten the skin into the grooves very tight. Then I leave the skin edge hanging until it dries. Then I finally put it on because I don't want it to get rotten. We work on this to make it smooth and even. This other one is lower than this one. This is where the skin lays. This one has the sharp edge. Now I am ready to put the skin on. When I bend the rim, I clamp it. I always leave it overnight to dry. When I wake up, it is ready for the skin. This is the skin I'm going to start putting on when I finish the drum. I'm going to stretch it out and then I'm going to tie it. I'm going to put lots of string on. I'm going to tie this one and stop for a while. After it dries, I'm going to work on it again. This is how it looks when it is ready. The one I am working on will turn out like this. to make the proper costumes for the dances. The sewing requires great skill and creativity. When I hear that there is going to be a gathering sometime soon, I start to make some clothing. I try to make the trimmings different each time. When there is a gathering of people, I always want to dress with nice clothing. Material for the clothing comes from the animals hunted by the Inugaluwi. In some communities, southern clothes and supplies are also used. <laughs> Clothing is made from summer caribou skins. We use these skins to make dancing parkas, hats, pants, and mitts. 
We make the trimming from the belly part of the caribou. Sometimes we scrape off the hair and tan the skin until it is very soft. The Inuit drum dancers do not have the same styles of clothing, drum making, singing, and dancing. Each community and region has its own method of drum making, dress, and dancing. The differences reflect the unique lifestyles of the various Inuit. Long ago, the Alaska drummers and dancers had their own group. They learned their own ways and songs. The drummers and dancers from around the coast had their own songs, too. There are a lot of different ways to dance. Some are good entertainers. Some don't dance too well. Some are lively, and some are not so lively. When the people of Holman perform, they dance, sing, and play the drum at the same time. Drumming is the basic element of Inubialawit dancing. It is done with skill and enthusiasm. Once again, we here at the Inuvialuit Communication Society would like to congratulate APTN on their successful launch. We'd also like to thank you, the viewers, for watching Swangen. I'm your host, Janine Blake, and I'll see you next week. Ilanilu.